Why is it that loose terminations in electrical systems cause fires? All right, so this is some of the, one of those things that you just kind of learn as an electrician, like, oh, make sure that you're making tight joints and that you pre-twist your wire nuts, <laughs> that you don't leave loose terminations, but you don't think on like a theoretical level on what's actually happening. And this stuff's kind of serious. I mean, there's like 51,000 home fires that are caused by electrical problems every single year. There's 500 people on average that die every year from electrical fires. And really most of these problems happen in walls where there's really flammable material. So fires can get started because of this. But what I wanted to do was look at the actual circuit conditions. So I drew out a whole bunch of different circuit conditions um, so that you can see moment by moment as a termination starts to heat up what's happening electrically and why it's all happening. It's really actually quite interesting. I learned some things on this one. So let's get into it. So we kind of know, right? Like if you have a failure point in a circuit, like a termination, wire nut comes a little bit loose, it's losing its connection, which means that compared to it just being a solid connection, there's less connection, which ends up being more resistance. So less current flow. So when we have a high resistance termination, what happens is we have a whole bunch of heat that builds up and that can be a really dangerous situation. But I wanted to go through why and show you specifically circuit condition after circuit condition to follow what's actually happening because the graph of how this works would actually surprise you. I always thought that like, oh, if you just keep increasing resistance to a certain point, the heat's gonna just keep building up. Part of the problem is that we have a fixed load that's always drawing current and the resistance isn't changing. We just have a termination where the resistance is changing. So it's kind of interesting. Let's dig into this. So if we have a circuit in a house, we have a, a AC power supply. If it's just a single load, we just have a series circuit, right? In, in houses, we have parallel loads. We have receptacles that are all run in parallel. When we run a branch circuit, we have a breaker, we have a hot and a neutral, and we hit each one of our receptacles. So it's a parallel circuit. However, in our case, we just have a single load. So what we have is a load that is in series with the rest of the circuit. Now, when we have a termination, let's say that this, um, this receptacle, there's a space heater plugged into it. Well, if we have a, a joint somewhere, um, we're gonna be in series, like you know, two blacks start to come apart or a neutral termination or something like that starts to kind of come apart. We're gonna be adding a resistance essentially in series with our load. So now we can think, okay, well, in a series circuit, we've got a couple of rules. Kirchhoff's voltage law says that we're gonna have a certain amount of voltage drops. All of the voltages are gonna drop uh, for all, over all the loads and match whatever the source voltage is. So if it's 120 volt source, the total voltage drops across each one of the resistances that we're adding is going to equal 120 volts. So we know we're gonna have voltage drop as a problem. We know in a series circuit, current is the same no matter what through the entire circuit. Um, so if we're changing resistance values, it is changing the total amount of current through the entire circuit, but the same amount of current is gonna go through both components. Um, so it's not just gonna be different current going through each one, it's gonna be fixed and be the same. So there's a couple of things that you're gonna see that you just might not be aware of. And I want you guys to check this as well. If you're an electrical engineer, if you're like a math head and you know electrical theory, I want you to check me on all this stuff because this is just my mind math going through what I know about theory. This isn't something that like I was taught. So um, as a termination fails, resistance is gonna rise at that termination. Not at the load though. The load is still gonna be a fixed resistance, which means current is still gonna be called for through that resistor because there's a certain resistance. We are now adding a resistance. So at that point, resistance is going to raise. Now, um, essentially what we're doing is we're adding a new resistor uh, in series. So that means that we're gonna have series voltage drop. We're now gonna have a voltage drop across the actual load, the heater, but we're also gonna have a voltage drop across the termination because the termination is now a resistor. Um, and then what, is, what this is gonna cause is it's gonna cause a spike in heat dissipation at that termination point, but it's not a like one-to-one -one ratio. It's not like if you keep raising resistance, you're gonna keep dissipating more and more heat because the current is not fixed. Um, so you're gonna have this kind of like spike of heat and then at a certain point, resistance keeps rising, but the heat dissipation keeps going down. So that was the thing that I just kind of was like, whoa, that's, I'd never thought of that. 
So let's break into the examples. I've got a few slides. Each one of them kind of looks like this. We're going to go from normal resistance. We're going to raise resistance at a, at a, a termination. We're going to keep raising it and keep raising it. And we're going to see what happens. So in this situation, we have 120 volt uh, circuit, uh, 12 ohm resistor which when we bring 120 volts across 12 ohms, 10 amps is just going to naturally flow on its own. And the heat dissipation from that is 1200 watts. So you just think of a 1200 watt space heater. Here's all the math on it if you wanna see. Now, if we were to introduce a fault where we have a termination that hasn't completely broken open yet, it's just starting to lose its connection. What's gonna happen is we're gonna start increasing uh, resistance there. The resistance at the load's not affected at all. It's still just a fine heating element designed exactly how it was. Nothing changes there. But the resistance now is going to be the total resistance of whatever the resistance at that termination point is and the resistance of the load. So now instead of 12 ohms of resistance in the whole circuit, we have 16 ohms of resistance in that circuit. So we need to figure out, okay, with 16 ohms of resistance, we need to figure out total current and current is just voltage over the resistance. So it's 120 volts over 16 ohms of resistance. That gives us 7.5 amps. So now, instead of the 10 amps that was flowing through the whole circuit, it's only 7.5 amps because we have added opposition. So less current can flow. What this also means is that we have a voltage drop across here and here. So to figure out this voltage drop, we have uh, 7.5 amps uh, times four ohms of resistance, E equals I times R, which means E is 30 volts. So that means there's gonna be 30 volts dropped across this load or uh, this load, this, this resistor, this termination point is gonna utilize 30 volts um, to, for it to be a resistor. Um, then that also changes the voltage drop here. If we take 120 volts that we have minus whatever that voltage drop is, 30 volts, we get 90 volts. So that means we have 90 volts now that's gonna be driving that space heater. So it's not operating at full voltage. There's less voltage, less pressure to drive that load. So it's actually gonna change the output of that load. It's not gonna be 1200 watts anymore. It's only gonna be 675 watts that is gonna be able to be put out, even though there's no damage to the space heater. But what's gonna happen, what's interesting is if you put that same uh, 7.5 amps in for our uh, Joule's law formula, power equals um, current squared times the resistance. Well, we have a four ohm resistor. So this is only for the, the new resistor, the failure point, and this is for the load. I just tried to keep them separate. So if we have a four ohm resistance, 7.5 uh, amps, that means 225 watts of power is gonna start dissipating at that failure point which makes sense, right? It's a, it's, there's more resistance. So now the conductors are gonna start heating up and you're gonna start melting insulation off because you have 225 watts of power. You just created like another little space heater as this termination. So that's kind of interesting, right? You might not think of it like that. Um, so it's gonna reduce the amount of power at the load. It's gonna increase the power at that specific termination. Now this is, um, I guess this would be a, probably a small increase in resistance. Let's see when we continue to raise the, the resistance. So if we have a medium amount, let's say we have eight ohms of resistance instead of four ohms. So now the termination is really starting to come apart. It's still making a connection and there's still conductivity there. Um, we're just really losing material um, or we're, we're uh, losing, you know, like the amount of surface area of the conductors that are touching. So we have even more resistance now, less current flow. So we're gonna say there's eight ohms of resistance. We've just doubled it. This is still fixed at 12 ohms because nothing's wrong with it. So what that does is it means that we have 20 total ohms now of resistance in the circuit. So if you do 120 volts divided by 20 ohms of resistance, you get six amps. So now there's only six amps flowing through the entire circuit where there was 7.5 a minute ago. So figuring out our new voltage drop, we have six amps of current times eight ohms of resistance six and eight's 48. So our voltage drop is now 48 volts. So now there's uh, 48 volts. There's more voltage present for this load and there's even less voltage present for this load, only 72 volts. So the, the, it's gonna struggle even harder to produce heat, to dissipate heat. This is gonna have more heat dissipation to it uh, instead. So now we see there's only 432 watts there, but there's 288 watts present at that termination. So the conductor's really starting to get hot, probably glowing at this point, and uh, the insulation around the conductor is probably gonna start melting, right? So you would think, okay, well, if we're just gonna keep upping this, isn't it just gonna keep getting exacerbated? And the answer is actually no. So uh, looking through this situation, next slide, 
if we go up to 28 ohms, right? Dramatic increase in resistance. So we're, we're like nearing the point where we're getting to like an open circuit condition. Um, still pretty far away from it. I, if I was gonna do an open circuit condition, I probably would do like a thousand ohms or like a hundred thousand ohms or something like that. Cause it's still there, it's still connected, but your uh, current's gonna be so little that it's like nearly nothing. Um, so anyways, just to show that the increase in opposition, now we're sitting at uh, 40 ohms worth of total resistance. 120 divided by 40, three amps. So you might also not realize, but the current keeps dropping at the same time because with Ohm's law, if we have a fixed voltage and our resistance keeps increasing, our, our current draw has to decrease. That's the ratio here. So uh, the current is gonna keep dropping. So now we have three amps across the entire circuit through both of these uh, resistances. Now our voltage drop, we're gonna have three amps of current times 20 ohms or 28 ohms. That gives us 84 volts dropped right here. So a large amount of voltage drop right here, but there is a fixed amount. We can only go to 120 volts, right? There's 120 volt supply. So it could keep increasing, but it's never gonna hit 120 because some of the voltage is always gonna be dropped here as well. So it's gonna like try to balance out at 120, but that's the maximum and it can't even get that. It might get like 119 point, it zero 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 five three two or something like that. Okay, so then we have the uh, the other voltage drop. We just take 120 minus that 84 volts, and we get 36. Now there's only 36 volts there present, so the power that's able to be dissipated from those heating elements is super low. And you notice 252. Well, wait a second. That's lower than before. We were going up, and now we're going back down. So if we look back one slide, we were 288. The first slide when we started introducing this termination that was 225 watts started dissipating more heat at six amps um, you know lower current but uh, higher resistance and that seems to be the maximum and now it's going back down to 252 watts and just to make sure you know three amps three squared times 28 252 so that's what kind of surprised me is like oh wait I, I mean i guess that makes sense because the conditions of the circuit are fixed we have two resistors one of them is increasing, increasing to a certain point where it's gonna open, right? So in an open condition, no more current's gonna flow. And that resistor is not gonna be putting out any uh, heat dissipation at that point. So it does make sense that it's not just gonna have like a runaway event and just keep getting hotter and hotter, um, but it, there is kind of a curve to it. So this is what I put together. This graph is a silly graph because it represents resistance, an increase in resistance. Over here, I'm just calling this amplitude. He meant to say magnitude, not amplitude. Each one of these uh, represents kind of what's happening as a graph. So you'll notice we had a spike in our power and then we start coming down. As we start increasing our resistance, we have this immediate effect. But then after, uh, you know, as time goes on and that thing starts to lose its connection even more, we start increasing resistance to an infinite level, right? To a certain point where boom, it's not connected anymore. And now it is absolutely the most resistive. It's an insulator at, at this point, because it's not touching. So current is gonna have the inverse relationship of that, right? If we don't have any problems with the termination, current's just gonna flow through like it needs to, max current. But the more in, uh, we start introducing resistance, the less current's gonna flow. So there's a certain amount where we are gonna hit zero on this graph, and it's when we open the circuit, right? That's when uh, resistance is at its maximum and current is at its minimum, at zero. And then uh, our resistance is gonna ex uh, increase exponentially. So this is an exponential curve. Um, we're talking, all of this is specifically the termination, not the circuit. So right, that the circuit has a load and the load we're not factoring into any of this stuff. We're just saying that termination point by itself is going to have an exponential increase in resistance. It started out from having zero resistance, right? Or like maybe some internal resistance inside the conductor itself because every conductor has some inherent resistance in it, but the termination didn't add any resistance. So as we add resistance, we're gonna start increasing, increasing, and we're gonna get to a point where it's infinitely increasing because they've broken apart.
So I just thought that that was really interesting. So if you're uh, if you're sitting there like, okay, like why, why do I care about this? It, this is the reason that you need to make sure that you're torquing certain things if the manufacturer's instructions say to torque them. If you're building a service or, or you know, and you, you put those lugs in, if you don't get them tight enough, you're gonna change the resistance. And if enough moisture and change in temperature, something freezes and then it's really hot, all of these things change termination points over time. And so you could start having a weak termination. If this is like the service neutral or something like that, you could have current trying to take path, if the neutrals and grounds are bonded at service, trying to take a path through ground to get through things. Like it's a really crazy situation uh, when you remove a neutral termination. But the, when you start having these failure points, a lot of the problem is you can have fires in walls. So if you made up a joint and you're one of those people, one of those electricians, that doesn't like to pre-twist their, their wire nuts, what you have is uh, a situation where you just barely put these things on and they're touching and heat and cold over time can start to expand those things to the point where they're not gonna touch anymore. Now, I know that the, the wire nuts are listed, you know, that it says on the instructions, you don't have to pre-twist, you can just twist these on. That's totally fine. I'm not here to argue the whole like pre-twist thing. You guys know where I stand on it. I always pre-twist because it's a verified guaranteed thing. Nobody's gonna take one of my joints apart and everything's just gonna come apart on me. So the whole point though is make sure when you're putting receptacles in or doing anything that you are putting uh, all of your terminations tight, um, if there's anything in the manufacturer's instructions, we have to follow that per code. So you have to do torque values if there is something that needs to be torqued. Um, a lot of the city inspectors lately are, are like checking that. So you have to mark your torque settings and you have to have like the, the actual literature inside of the panel that shows what the, um, you know, the, the pound feet or whatever your torque values are. Um, so it's just, it's, it's important that you make up good terminations in electrical. That's the point of this video. Hope you guys learned something. Love you guys. See you in the next one.